So we're Assassin, so yeah. If you guys want to follow along, that's the web address, theassassingate.com. I don't know. The other class likes looking at it when we talked about it. Right. So <laughs> you guys know um, like you know what Assassin is? Mm -hmm. yeah. You saw like so like a lot of years it's students. a pretty popular game, like people play it in different uh, high schools and in different colleges and the seniors above us played it and the seniors above them played it and the way it was originally organized is a lot of it was done by hand. So people would like Facebook an administrator, uh, their name, like that they were playing, and it was all kind of organized like by hand through that. And uh, when I was a senior in October of 2014, like uh, I was kind of looking through like ways uh, that we could set up a game of Assassin for ourselves, and I was like, I don't think I want to have to go through all the hard work of uh, writing it down by hand. And we ended up doing a lot more work than <laughs> we would have had to do if we wrote it down by hand, but uh, we made a product that will eliminate a lot of that hard work for other people in the future. So basically the point of it is to kind of like control the game so that you don't need an admin running it so much. So it assigns like who has who, assigns your target. Um, we put the daily rule through there so people can see the daily challenges. And then this is the main page, it's what we call the kill feed. So whenever someone's assassinated, it'll pop up here. So people were running through school and they were constantly reloading this page to find out who just died. Um, I think we had about 60,000 hits in one week in January, so we had a lot of people refreshing the page just to, to see who was getting killed in the game. Yeah. So building it. Um, I built the first version of the site. There are two versions. The one you just saw a picture of is our V2. It looks a little bit cleaner. We did, like, yeah, we did some design changes to it with the help of Ben. And so the first one, though, um, I had to learn two new languages in order to write this website. Uh, it involves PHP and uh, MySQL, SQL, and so those are server languages. They communicate between the front end and the back end of the server. So you guys probably know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's, so that's all I knew going into this. Yeah. And I was like, I, I wanted to build this though, and so obviously like there were some things yeah. I needed to learn. So all this code you can see right here, this is actually PHP, so that allows us to connect to our database and that's where we store all the information, who has who as a target, your username, your profile picture, how many kills you've got, if you're dead or alive, things like that. Um, and as you can see, it was a really big project. You can't even see everything here. This section that you're seeing right here is just this tiny part of this one page that we're loading. And you can see we have all these different pages and then there are like four or five different CSS files of over it's a, lot like of a thousand lines. So. It definitely didn't happen overnight. Like, no. there, was, there was a lot that went into it. Um, if I could just say one thing about building it, uh, like the most important thing that I learned was not to put off starting it. Like it's pretty easy to, to, to look at something that you don't know, like all these languages that I didn't know how to write, that I couldn't read, I didn't understand any of the syntax for any of them. And like the most important thing, like, like that the reason I think I was able to complete this project before our seniors wanted to start playing is because I started. And even though I only knew HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript, it didn't matter. I still started. I built the framework for the website. I drew it out on pen and paper. I planned it out, and I thought about it conceptually, how like different parts of it were going to work. And so that's a pretty important step. Yeah. So getting into like the structure and stuff, like we're talking about, like it's not. It's important not to just go straight into writing the code. Like you map it out, see what it's going to look like, how everything's going to work before you start coding it. It'll make it a lot easier. I think later we talk about some of the mistakes we did, and some of them had to do with that. Like, we have so much CSS that we're still trying to go through that like doesn't do anything. So we, it's loading all of this content that does absolutely nothing. So when we were building it, I remember uh, we were doing like a little bit of Google Drive posting, and I asked Mr. Myers like how he thought I should store all this data because I'm taking in usernames, I'm taking in people's names, I'm taking in passwords, I'm taking in profile pictures, and I have to put it somewhere. I can't just like can't leave it all on the client side. So he was like, you should use uh, uh, Google Spreadsheets because it'll be easy to use and I think you'll be able to manage with it. And I kind of just blew him off. I was like, I don't want to use Google Spreadsheets. I want to use PHP and I want to host it live. And so I just jumped right into it. I mean, I had the help of uh, one of the other uh, kids in my class, Michael Whitner. So he knew a little bit more about the server side of things. So he definitely helped. But we hosted it on GoDaddy. That's a website. Like GoDaddy, right? It was like twelve dollars to buy the domain and post it for the year. Yeah, which isn't that bad. Yeah. And then cPanel is. Uh, it's the like the add-in page that we see, so that it lets us control all the data. We can see how many views we're getting, things like that. 
you know, it's just like little data stuff. So then, obviously, these are the languages we use. So PHP and MySQL, we had to use for data connection. Those are the two new ones we have to learn. And then, obviously, the regular HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, and then one of the cool things I did was I made the admin page for us. So rather than having to go in and like change the daily rule, like by going back into the source code, I made a web page that can do all that. So like we can send out emails, um, we can update the daily rules. I actually put all the profile pictures on there because we liked laughing at what people put as their profile pictures. Um, we could also look up assassin information. So like if someone forgot their pin and they were too stupid to like look it up, which we'll get to later. Um, I could look up what their pin was, I could look up who they're going after, who's after them, all that good stuff. Just one more thing about building, and like, I don't think I can stress this enough. Um, just because it's coding and it's like computer based, doesn't mean like your first step should be um, writing code. Like, pen and like, paper and pencil, I guess, I, I would stay away from pen. Like, you have to draw it out, like, everything. From the targeting system I drew out to the the original layout of the kill feed to like, I mean, every time I, I looked at a new page, I drew it out. So. Even if you're not going to use it for like how the code's going to work, even if you just do it for the website layout, that'll help a lot when yeah. you get to doing it. All right, so how it works. So like we said, we have the server side and the client side. So the server side, do you guys know what a server is? It's basically like any computer that can store information. So like imagine just like a big room like this without monitors, just a whole bunch of com computers that we can connect to and store data in. That's all a server is. Um, so we have our server through GoDaddy. We can't actually access it, we just bought it. And so it stores all the information. So we store a user ID, which is just a unique identifier, um, the username, password, email, number of kills, if they're dead or alive, and their profile picture. So then on the client side, this is like what you guys would be seeing when you pull your phone or your tablet or your uh, computer. And that's how we had to visualize all the data and. Uh, worry about user interface and user interaction um, to make sure that you can view it appropriately. Uh, then use cookies to help keep track of, like if some people didn't upload a profile picture, we can use cookies to leave little bits of data and say like, if uh, this person um, visits the page five times and still hasn't uploaded a profile picture, give them a little yeah, annoying pop Send them a little alert it. saying you forgot to upload a profile picture. Um, Google Analytics is pretty cool. Uh, Anything made by Google is going to be really awesome, and Google Analytics is an amazing like website you can log on to and keep track of how your your own domain, your own website is performing. So we use it to keep track of uh, how users use the website, like what platform they're on, if they're if they're using an iPhone, if they're using Safari, Chrome, Firefox. We can keep track of how old they are. I know where they are. Yeah, I can we see how many people, people from like Russia and China coming. Viewing it. I can see how many people are on it like this instant. I could see how many people were on 30 minutes ago. So we use that a lot uh, for keeping track of like the data. Yeah. And one of the cool things, like doing a project in class, we never would have learned stuff like this. Like doing the cookies in Google Analytics. That's something that like we really only learned because we took on this project and we decided to try and learn it. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So customer support. So an important part about our project was we didn't just build a project and like. Yay, we're done. Like we actually released it and people were using it. So obviously not everyone knew how to use it. So this is just a little bit of advice we have on customer support. Uh, this is a picture I found online and it really sums up everything. Just right. So this is the developer, those are the users, and it says how users see developers. And so as you can see, they all think we're just like some alien speaking a foreign language. And then down here, this is how developers see users. So this is us as developers, and the users really have no idea how your product works. So Okay, yeah, you really have like you think like we would go through and you think like all right we put an enter button right here you think they would figure out where that is but no they don't I mean when I put in like uh, I put in everyone's pin in their settings so that if they ever forgot what their pin was like their confirmation code they could go in and check it and for the entire version one of the website nobody could find it and I got so furious about it that I, I made like flashing I made the yellow flash I made it flash the people still can colors find it. I find. And yeah, people still haven't found it. So obviously, we had a lot of customer complaints, and so this was one message Justin had on Facebook. You can notice this was 7:46 at night. We were, I mean, we were in class doing customer support. Is we were also doing some coding in class, like every <laughs> single day, like every single class. But like, um, if you notice, like that's one message I got. Like, 7:46. There's one at 7:43, 7:41, 7:28, 7:28, 7:08, and 7:03. Those are all different people. Like I'm constantly like. 
this was like when I had first launched it, I was just being bombarded with messages, and I had no one to help me because Ben wasn't there. So I was, I was there that one. I was after. Sometimes I answer them really quickly if I'm I'm angry and I don't I don't want to have to deal with these people. And sometimes I, if I'm having fun, I'll interest them. So this is a girl. I was like, she was having trouble. What was she doing? She was having trouble registering. Yeah. She kept throwing an error. So I said, seems like your MD5 hash is not rerouted properly. And so I'm just like making up all this stuff that doesn't make so sense. So that means absolutely nothing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, what other stuff? There was, I mean, I, I got. There are other things. There are so many, yeah. I and mean, we started pretending like we were actual like uh, customer service. We were like, "Hello, how are you doing? Nice to nice to see you. Like, how's it going?" And then at the end, we're like, "Thank you. Have a nice day. Please contact us." And sometimes we're just being a bad man, and we're just like, "Okay." Quality assurance. All right. So the future. So we have rather big plans for the website. Right now, it can only run one game at a time, so it can only be used at Greenwich High School. One game running. Um, and since it was so successful here, we decided to take it to the next level. So we're going to recreate the platform so that basically you sign up for an account and then you can join a game. So there could be a game going on here in Stanford and Daria and across the country in California. There could be games going on in any number of high schools, camps, universities you want. Yeah? Um, would, shouldn't you like make some way that like you can't just join random games? Yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah. You could end up with like a thousand re like not real accounts from like California joining a game. Yeah, that's something that we'll think of, like, we'll obviously discuss that a lot when we start building it. And obviously, there'll be multiple versions come out. Like, when we created this game first, we had a lot of people creating fake accounts. So there were like four or five people going after this one guy. So the way we fixed that was we added email confirmation. So before you could sign up, you'd have to put your email in. It would send you a little code in the email. You would put that into your, into the browser, and it would allow you to sign up, and that way, one, it adds like 20 seconds, but that deterred a lot of people. And you couldn't use the same email more than once. So, so I think a pretty easy way to like organize it so you would only have your class or your school in the same game, to be able to find an administrator, like some person who would take charge of their class or their school, and then they would be able to invite specific people of their class, like via Facebook, or just send out an email to their class, and then give them a code that they can enter, and then they'll be able to be in the same game together. So. I don't think that's something that we'll really have trouble doing, but it's definitely something we need to take into account. Yeah. And our ultimate goal is like right now, like Justin and I, when we were admins, we couldn't actually play the game because we were doing so much work and like we're looking at all this information about who is who, et cetera, et cetera. So our ultimate goal is that it'll be completely like wipe out the admin. The admin will just like do like the daily rule and stuff and they'll still be able to play the game. Um, so we're hoping maybe as more people go on, we'll start making revenue, whether that's through ads or another means. Um, but definitely if it takes off, that's something we're gonna consider. And this is a really big one that you guys should learn now is efficiency and organization. I mentioned earlier, we have so many CSS files and like half of it's not doing anything. And like we realized about like halfway through building it that we're loading every single CSS for like each page, even if only one of those files is actually doing something. So it's important that like, from the beginning, you organize it in a way that you're only using what you need and make your code as efficient as possible. It and might not matter when your website's like not that big, but as you get more and more content, it actually affects things like It slows time. it down yeah. a lot. It will slow your website down. And there's tools in Chrome that you yeah. can use to... If you guys go to yeah. Chrome, you guys know to like inspect the element in Chrome, right? Yeah. If you go there, there'll be a little tab that says resources, and it'll show you like how long it's taking to load each part of your website. Yeah. So like one picture might make your website like five seconds. really helps a lot, especially like Justin said, he built the first version, and then I came along to come help him. And like, if it, luckily his code was commented really well, it would say like, this chunk of code does this, this one line is actually like posting to the database, et cetera, et cetera. And that really helps a lot because it may make perfect sense to you, but you show someone else and it's, it could be a foreign language. And I had comments because I didn't even know what I was writing at the time. <laughs> I had to remind myself when I came back to like what this actually did, so. Yeah. Like, I didn't really know how to write these languages, yeah. so I was... When you, have, I was when you have, like, 12 different pages that are over, like, 2,000 lines long, and you forget what each little section does, so it helps a lot. Right. Okay, what we learned. Um, well, we learned that it's really important uh, 
if we're talking about like user interaction and user interface, to make sure everything's as clear as possible so that we avoid as much confrontation with uh, who our like, product, I guess, is released to. I, like, I needed to, if I could go back and change one thing, I'd try to eliminate the amount of messages that I was getting <laughs> by making it an easier to use platform to begin with. Uh, so that's definitely something that uh, we need to work on. Yeah, and so we learned probably the most from everything by releasing it to the public. Without doing that, we would have never realized all the errors we had. One big thing I wanted to talk about um, was beta testing. So there was one point when we first joined and I realized that people could just type in any random pin and it could kill anybody else, even if it's not their target. So like if you made your pin one, two, three, four, I could just type that in and it would kill you. Um, so to fix that, I worked all night. I stayed after school with Mr. Myers. We were working on it during programming club. Got it working, went to sleep, came into school Monday morning. I was in physics just across the hall. 7.30, game starts, and my Facebook just exploded with people messaging me saying they couldn't kill anybody. Like, everything that I just worked on didn't work. So I sat there for physics. I did double block physics for two hours sitting there. <laughs> redoing the website in the middle of class. <laughs> and we, we actually paused the game. We canceled the game for a few hours um, while I fixed it, and then we had to put it back up. But and so stuff they, like that does happen. There were like risks like that that we had to take. And one of the initial risks, like the biggest risk I had to take, was uh, building the website and then announcing it to my class. Because I knew yeah. once I announced it, no everyone going was going to be excited. Yeah, there's no going back. Like Nobody else was going to want to like do it the old way. The other seniors had done it. Um, and so. Like after I announced it, like I realized, like I'm taking a huge risk because if this flops, if this fails, like if something goes wrong and it doesn't work, my entire class is gonna look at me and be like, "Why would you do this?" <laughs> so, so it's important though that I took that risk. If I hadn't taken that risk, I wouldn't be giving this presentation now, and we wouldn't have had an opportunity to make money in the future and launch a product to uh, uh, multiple other places. And there's so much I've learned through this that only came from me taking like the initial risk of saying, I'm gonna do it anyway, if it fails, it fails. I'm ready to accept that failure. If it comes, I'll take it. But the point was like, you had to take the risk. Now is definitely a great time to do this too. Like, if we had figured this out like 10 years down the road when maybe like we're releasing an actual app and we're like getting millions of people on and all of a sudden it crashes, it's better that you learn it in school. Like, yeah, like your friends might be upset at you, but like, you know that it's all learning and that it's important that you learn that now. All right, so we want to give a special thanks to Mr. Myers for helping us. He was helping us a lot. Like, and also, I know you yelled at us sometimes, but in class we never really worked on the actual project. We're working on this a lot. So even though we're Skip giving this presentation now, during the quarter that I was making this, he gave me a B minus. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> um, and then we also wanted to thank Michael Winter because he did help us a lot with learning PHP. He supplied us with some of the code and we were able to learn from that. So, so do you guys have any questions or answers? Yeah. Did you code the, uh, like the, the website first, then like the PHP and MySQL? Or? So like, it's all I knew. All I knew was how to code the original, like the look of the website, the layout. Right? That's like what I started with. And then quickly I realized this, this isn't going to work with just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I, there would be no, you have to have like a login and be able to store your information somewhere. And that's kind of like the wall I hit where I was like, I need to actually learn these languages. So yeah, I, I definitely did start with just like, I wanted to see how this would look. I drew it out a little bit. But then quickly after I realized that I needed to devote more of my time to learning the new languages, PHP and MySQL, and also figuring out how certain things were going to work. Like I spent a good amount of time figuring out how I was going to be able to get the target uh, system to work. Um, going from like how it knew to look from if he was going for you and then you were going for him, how he knew to get to him after he killed you. So like the targeting system, I, I actually drew out a lot on paper to try to figure out how it was gonna work. Um, yeah, and then once we got going, Justin did more of like the front end, like the design and everything, and I did more of the back end, the PHP, getting everything working. Um, something we forgot to talk about before, which I know I talked in the other presentation, with beta testing was one of the problems we have is we both use Android, we both use Chrome on our Android phones, we both only use Chrome on our Mac laptops, and when we release it to the public and everybody in the school is using Safari on an iPhone, we realize that the browsers do load it slightly differently, and so we tested it, yes, we got it working, perfect, 
And then we realized no one on an iPhone could actually click the text box. So since we didn't have like an iPhone to test with, that problem occurred. So definitely when you're releasing something, test it on as many devices as possible. Yeah, cross browser test and cross device test. Yeah. I mean like if it's a Blackberry, you don't really care about that. No one uses Blackberry, but definitely iPhone, Android, Chrome, Safari, Firefox. Test it on all of them. Tablets, desktops, yeah. TVs, like you want to try to get it on everything. TVs? Yeah. Smart yeah, walking around with a TV. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that looks that doesn't look suspicious at all. What is that? That's probably just a phone call. Who else has a question? I yeah. Oh. I know you said I wanted to decide the like revenue for the future, yeah. but I don't know if you touched upon that. Yeah. So basically, one of the things we tried doing was putting ads on like one of the pages, but we didn't have enough traffic on it, and like. Google, what Google does is they scan through the page with robots and like see what the page is about to try and put ads related to that. And they couldn't figure out what the page is about. Not enough people were going to it. So we scratched that idea. It's mainly because if you look at the content of our website, it's like the words, like the actual like text. Is that. And it's like just like everyone's name, name and like yeah. random stuff. Like it, Google wanted to find out a category to place my website under, like fashion, like whatever, blog, like. And, and it couldn't find one, so it was like, we're not going to put ads on your website yeah. because we don't know what to put them, like what kind of advertisements to put on. Is that like a network? Wait, what? Can you call it a network? It's not what we call it. Like, Google has to read through the actual yeah, like, text. Like, like we're not input into the data. data. Yeah. So, like, you can't like, take it? No. no. But we can use yeah. other platforms, like, besides Google Ooh. AdWords. Like, we don't have to use Google's. Yeah. We just kind of, we gave up on that idea because it was too much of it. We wanted to focus more on the product than making money right For now. For now, it doesn't matter because yeah. advertisement at this scale isn't actually going to be like a right penny. Now. So we're going to wait until we can actually launch on a larger scale and then worry about uh, ads and revenue. Yeah. Also, uh, will the current junior be able to Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely one of our plans. I mean, I, I can't imagine it doesn't at least stay at the high school. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of at least one. Yeah, if it doesn't take off, we know that the high school will continue using it. Here okay. first. Um, how, like, how do you know that the people who sign up are a senior? Ah, so, <laughs> so we had people messaging us telling us when they were fake accounts, and that was really the only way we knew. We did have one junior signed up, but trust me, he got his punishment. We added, like, a line of code that basically sends him an email whenever anybody <laughs> loads any single page. <laughs> and so, this kid got, like, 4,000 emails in, like, a week. So. So don't do that. Yeah. More of the threat, don't sign up. And like, I think most, like, we released it on our class Facebook page. So most people that knew about it were seniors. It's um, kind of like the fun of the game, though. Like, yeah. if you were, when you guys are seniors next year, the juniors aren't going to want, like, one or two juniors aren't going to really want to be a part of something that all the seniors. Yeah, like, it's a senior thing. And yeah. Like, the community realizes that's a senior thing. And if one or two juniors do sign up, the admin can remove them. Yeah. yeah. Yep. What's the URL to your website? Theassassingame.com. So originally the URL was ghsassassin.com, and then I scratched that, and I was like, I don't want to localize it just to go to high school, so we changed the domain. Yeah, you know, like, speaking of localizing it and spreading out, like, how do you plan on getting the word out like, other schools about this? So I was at a track meet, uh, like, two weeks ago, and we were talking to West Hill. Uh, like, we were just hanging out. And uh, they were talking to us about, like, their assassin game, and so I showed them. Uh, on my phone, like what I built, and I was like, you guys should check this out. And so, that's kind of how I've like spread the word so far. I'm not actually trying to reach out to these other schools really, because I don't have a product that they can use. Um, but like I do tell other schools about it, and other schools, I think Darian, did they reach out to you? Yeah. Yeah. So like, especially since we're high schoolers right now, it means we have the connections with other schools, so we can talk to people in those schools and get them using it. Also, with social media now, it's so easy to like post it on Facebook, and I know that my friends across the globe will see it, and they can all start using it. And so. also, both of us are going to college next year, and yeah. like at our schools, we're probably going to introduce the website oh, yeah. and say, we can use this in our school and, and other schools, and so there's there's a lot of potential for it to spread to other schools and universities. Other questions? I'm going to ask the one I asked yesterday, which was, what has been your favorite part of the whole experience? What has been your least favorite part of the whole experience? So my favorite part was when like we finally got it working and just like 
that satisfaction is seeing people like running around the school with their spoons, like asking like, yo, what's your pen? Like, oh my god, this person just died. And like knowing that like I built the app that they're using, like that was definitely the most satisfying. And the worst part, probably like, I'll tell you. I mean, it's gotta be, <laughs> it's gotta be coming in on a Friday with your first two blocks open oh, yeah. after having done like bug review the night before, and then realizing you got 600 messages, 400 of them are from Ben, and then <laughs> the other 200 are from the entire senior class who's like, the game's not working, it's yeah. broken, why can't you fix it? Definitely fix like this, fix, fix that. It. That's gotta be the worst part. <laughs> I think yeah. if there's not a single class that I wasn't working on this website, and like, I'd be in the middle of Spanish class, just like, <laughs> my laptop open, like, messaging people trying to fix it. Like I said, I probably worked like, over like 15 hours in physics working on this. Um, yeah. How long in total do you guys think that you spent making it? We don't even know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've, I've spent three. weekends just devoted to this website. Like, I, and I mean, like, I've worked before from nine in the morning, basically the entire day, like to, to 10 p.m., 12 p.m. I mean, there was one time, I don't know if you guys heard about Mr. Myers when he went into the city for his tech expo. He was giving a speech about his company, and Justin and I went in with one of our other friends to go visit him. He was on the train like working on this project, messaging people, trying to get help solving like the algorithm that assigns targets to each other. So. That thing, the algorithm that assigns targets, took me weeks. Like it was probably the biggest hurdle I had to clear for the entire website, and it almost made me want to give up at like a ton of different times. And when I finally got it, that had to be like the happiest moment in my life. And then when I broke it a few weeks later, because it did work perfectly, yeah, it was really upset. It kept breaking and then it was breaking. <laughs> but it works. It works really well. But it wasn't funny when it broke. <laughs> Other questions? There are definitely other questions in the other class. I don't remember that. I don't know what happened. I think it's pretty shy. <laughs> All right, well, what do we say, guys? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Oh yeah, yeah, the battery did. <laughs>